guys and welcome back to the Crystal Anika series. Today we're going to be talking about how to survive a long distance relationship. Yes, yes, yes. Surviving a long distance relationship. So we're going to be giving pointers, pros and cons of long distance relationships and pros and cons of short distance relationships. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned for how we survived our long distance relationship. And as you all may know, me and Yinka were in a long distance relationship for about eight months? About eight months. About eight months of our relationship, we were in a long distance relationship, so. The beginning part of our relationship was long distance. Yeah, it was hard. That's how we started. It was hard. That's how we, literally how we started. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so today in this video, we wanted to talk about the ways in which we were able to get through our relationship and the dangers, the benefits, um, our recommendations on long distance relationships and basically what to do if you're in one um, to truly figure out how to know your partner in the best way and how to learn them and to be aware of some certain things that may come up in the relationship. Yeah. 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 Um, you want me to start off? Yeah. Sure thing. So yeah, when we first started dating, um, you know, she was still um, finishing up at Sam. I was pursuing my master's at Baylor. So from Waco, where Baylor's at, that's about three like, hours. Two, I think two and a half hours. About if I'm not mistaken. Two and a half. Yeah. Uh, so it was about two and a half hours, yeah. um, and that was basically the first eight months. And then after she graduated, she moved to um, Conroe, which is outside of Houston. It's um, even she was yeah, which was even <laughs> farther. Um, and she was working uh, from there for a while. Um, and that was up until about August um, that we were doing that. Um, and it was hard. I'm not gonna lie, it was really hard. Uh, we uh, had to be very creative um, with mm -hmm. how we did things. So, you know, the first part of our relationship, a lot of times we would meet, you know, halfway somewhere, yeah. like we would meet in College Station, yeah. um, which was about a halfway point. We would meet in Bryan, Texas. We would meet in just these random sp places and go on these random dates. No, but, seriously. You know, we had a we had a good time. We really got to enjoy each other mm -hmm. there. Sometimes we would just go the full distance. Sometimes I would just go and surprise her in Huntsville. Uh, um, sometimes she would come in to Waco and surprise me, and mm -hmm. we would just you know uh, spend time together. So. Yep, yep, yep. So our next point would be my version of the experience with long distance. Um, and I pretty much, you know, can relate with what he said. Um, we would literally meet halfway, y'all. Like, after a long day, we'd be like, okay, let's just get some pizza in College Station. So like, we drive an hour and a half just to see each other for like three hours and then drive back to our, <laughs> you know, locations. It was crazy, um, but it worked. And I'm glad we went through that struggle because we appreciate the short distance so much yeah. more. Yeah. Um, and it just, I mean, it just shows a lot about, you know, our determination and our yeah. commitment to yeah. each other and to the thriving of our relationship ultimately. Definitely, definitely. So, I mean, next we want to talk about some of the kind of pros and cons of yeah. long distance and we'll talk about our experience in that too as we talk mm -hmm. about it. Um, I think a good first point um, about some of the cons or the difficulty, struggles of long distance relationship uh, would definitely be um, the illusion, right? It's easy to fall into the illusion of how a person is because, you know, for me and Crystal, we're on FaceTime, you know, most of the time, like every day, you yeah. know, every day we're on FaceTime talking, yeah. having it up. And, you know, a lot of the little things that, you know, I do that annoy her, you know, uh, and the things that she did that annoyed me, we weren't able to see until we were actually together. Mm -hmm. So when we first got together, I think it was in Dallas, mm -hmm. we went to Dallas to, or, or I think it was in Dallas and boy, yeah. we was we was at each other's throats because yeah. it's like, oh my gosh, the way you chew your gum, oh man. The way you cross your leg, you cross your, everything. You know, and every, we were just clashing because we hadn't yet been in proximity with each other for long, long periods of time, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that was one of the first times we had spent like multiple mm -hmm. days together yeah. and we started seeing. We're like, oh no, yeah. oh no, yeah. we're done. We can't do this. Yeah, yeah, I was like, nah, you, nah. <laughs> I can't do it. It's a wrap. I can't do it. Yeah. But yeah, but we made it through, you know, we decided to push on and, you know, 
we decided from there to be more intentional about, you know, maybe weekend visits and, and spending more time together. Uh, eventually, you know, I think even in the summer in Chicago, we did like, you know, a week, week long, yeah. week long things and we got mm -hmm. to spend more time and, you know, we would always find a place for if Crystal was coming to where I was, find a place for her to stay or, you know, if I was going to where she was, find a place for mm -hmm. me to stay. Um, which brings us into our next point, which is temptation. Yeah. Um, those yeah, about. yeah, definitely. So the temptation factor in all of it, I would definitely say for us is stronger when we're apart for so long and then we see, you know? So it's almost like this built up like Ooh, Zitty. Yeah, you looking like a snack Ooh, right now. Ooh, you looking like a snack. And I want to unwrap you, but I can't. Yeah. Type of thing, you know? So, um, yeah. And for those, my, my bad to interrupt you, for uh -huh. those who don't know, we are saving mm -hmm. ourselves till marriage. Mm -hmm. you know, so. so we are a celibate couple, yeah. so we're definitely striving for that wedding night type, you know. Fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Glorifying God type of night, yeah, okay? Definitely. So, um, so yeah, the temptation is definitely harder because we hadn't seen each other for so long. So when we do come together, it's like this, this is this is gonna end in us having four kids if we don't get it <laughs> under control, you know. So um, we noticed that was like a, 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 a con of long distance relationships because we knew that you know um, distance is a huge stumbling block for both of us in our flesh. Um, we had to try to even lessen. The, the amount of time we spent apart like mm -hmm. we would the, 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 those are where those dates came in where we would meet halfway yeah. because we're like bro like we can't go that long without seeing each other because we're going to be more yeah. tempted and more prone to like want to yeah. wrap the snack you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. so um, that was definitely a con for us mm -hmm. um, and could be a con possibly for anyone else who does experience long distance relationships and I mean, I think it's natural as humans you know yeah. you miss the person so it's like yeah. oh my gosh when yeah. you see them you just want to like yeah. you know devour them you know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much especially if you you know if there's a deep attraction yeah there, it's like yeah it's natural like natural to what? want to you know what? and we definitely are deeply attracted to each other yeah so, i mean we thank god it wasn't the opposite where i look at her and i'm you know just want to <laughs> throw up but i look at her and i'm like man you know she is absolutely gorgeous so you know and and, and then just just our you know just the chemistry. Our, the chemistry between the us. The common you know? interests. Yeah, not just the physical, mm -hmm. but yeah, the more we're connecting emotionally. Yeah. It's natural for that to, you know, Yeah, definitely grow. So that was definitely a con. And just to touch back on the illusion factor of it, um, I would definitely say that long distance relationships can become a little bit of an illusion sometimes because like he said, you know, you only get glimpses of this person. And even when you guys do see each other, it's not for like, periods on end so you still don't know a lot about that person or things that you would see that would annoy you on a regular basis so it's so important to um, be wise and use discernment when you're dating someone in a long distance relationship because mm -hmm. we're all prone to show the better side of us we're all prone to show our best man we're not gonna come out here and show you all this ugly stuff immediately so I think it's always safe to say you know once you guys are no longer having that long distance relationship and you guys are now short distance, um, take some time to get to know each other. Don't rush into, you know, getting engaged or getting married just so soon. I mean, if that's what the Lord is calling you to do, then yeah, but um, if not, I would definitely say take some time to get to know each other, literally Absolutely. grow together, um, do life together, walk together, yeah. um, and naturally get to grow together and learn the other person because it's so important and you don't yeah. want to marry a stranger. You just don't, yeah. you know? So um, that would definitely be another con, I would say, is the illusion factor that we just mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we want to also talk about some of the pros of long distance dating. So. Um, one, one big pro is we were forced to be creative, you know, mm -hmm. um, since we're not seeing each other every day, it's like, man, how do we make the most out of the yeah. time we do have together? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we would go to, you know, random, you know, museums. She would take <laughs> me to farms where, like, swole chickens would chase us down. And, you know, that's a story for another video. <laughs> um, but, you know, we would just go enjoy nature, go to mm -hmm. the river, just go places, um, that we typically wouldn't go to, you know, um, mm -hmm. in, in places we typically wouldn't be. So I would say definitely that creative factor in terms of like dates, what dates look like. I think another uh, source of creativity is um, 
just in the, even how we're pursuing uh, into, uh, um, purity, mm -hmm. even how we're pursuing purity, um, I think, you know, we have to be creative, okay, like, let's mm -hmm. meet outside, you know, like, let's mm -hmm. do things outside, let's not be in the house, you mm -hmm. know, all all day, yeah. you know, because we might end up there all night, <laughs> we, oh, we ain't trying to have that, we you know, so, that. you know, just being creative. A problem for me would be seeing how determined we both were at making this work. Like, I think what distance does is that mm -hmm. it makes you work a little harder because mm -hmm. no man is gonna, you know, just want to be on the phone with you all day, all all that, you know, uh, with the woman who he can't even physically see or physically be with. And I think it takes a lot for a guy to still want to be with that person or to pursue them in in despite of the fact that you can't see this girl every week or every day because she's so far away. And also a pro is building trust. Um, a huge pro that I found in all of the long distance was building trust. Like, you know, just being content in trusting him to not cheat on me, to not, you know, yeah. act up or whatever the case may be, but to just trusting trust him to be the man that I know him to be. And also on my part, you know, I didn't have to uh, stalk him or chase him around or ask him where he was or ask him who he was with. I just chose to trust and believe that, you know, he was honoring me as much as I was honoring him in Huntsville at that time or in Conroe at that time. So I think trust is a huge factor that we were able to build in those moments mm -hmm. because um, it was almost like, okay, do you trust me enough for you not to see me mm -hmm. and still believe that I'm faithful to you. I think that that's where we kind of grew in that area, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty cool. Um, short distance relationships, um, that's that's the ideal that we want to yeah. work towards. You know, I think at the end of the day, I mean, I've heard stories of people, you know, they, they their whole dating experience was long distance and they have happy marriages, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that that's the ideal to work towards. I think with short distance, um, I think with, with short distance, it, there's a lot of pros to that and we kind of want to talk about some of those. So. Mm -hmm. so the pros of short distance would be that you have that person next to you to do life with, like all the time. And it's mm -hmm. so much fun. Like mm -hmm. I take joy and delight in our trips to H-E-B together. I'm like, this is so much fun. And like, it's just H-E-B, you know, but it's like, oh my gosh, like this is so much fun. So it's like little things like that become so much more significant um, just because you're able to actually do life with that person. You're able to see them at their worst. You're able to see them at their best. You're able to, you know, be there for them at their worst mm -hmm. and best. Um, it was, I mean, there are time, there were times where Yinko would be going through a lot and I just could not, could not come to Waco to comfort him or to encourage him and in some cases it just wouldn't have been wise um, on a purity aspect to drive out at like 10 p.m. to get to Waco around like what 12 a.m. Yeah, and then sleep where yeah. sleep where you know I didn't know anyone in Waco well enough to actually sleep at their place or it wasn't just convenient at that time to sleep at anyone's place because it was so last minute mm -hmm. so I think that um the pros to short no short distance or no distance would definitely be just the aspect of having the person near you, getting to know the person and learn from the person near you, mm -hmm. and not having any surprises in terms of who they are or who they aren't. Of course, there are still some cases where a person can still hide their character from you, mm -hmm. but that can only be for so long, whatever it's short distance. You'll find out eventually, like, yeah. what's in the dark must come to the light, okay, okay? So you'll find out eventually if they're full of trash, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll find out. So, but with long distance, it's like they can show you their best foot and they can show you the best part of them. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you might see some slacking places, but for the most part, they're going to want to put the best foot forward in all they need, that all that they do, because that's kind of what our, you know, life yeah. is, life yeah. is, you know, yeah. look at social media. We put our best pictures out there. We put our best moments out there. We don't put us looking raggedy, you know, yeah. uh, it's all for a reason. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I would say also community is a big deal uh, when you're talking about short distance relationship. I think community is huge and that's something, uh, I, I don't think we updated you guys, so we are in the same city now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've been in the same city for some months now. Almost uh, a year. Almost a year oh, now. So, uh, we are, yeah, 
just putting that out there. Yeah. But yeah, so about, like I said, community. Community is a big deal, and that's something we've learned that we mm -hmm. need. Like, it's a necessity to have people around us, you know what I'm saying, that can encourage us, mm -hmm. um, that we can, you know, pursue right. the Lord with, mm -hmm. learn from, mm -hmm. you know, uh, invest in, um, and also keep us accountable, you mm -hmm. know, give us things to do, you know. we started doing, you know, a couple dates. We also are doing premarital counseling mm -hmm. now and, you know, it's better than doing it on FaceTime, you know, True. or something like that, you know. True. So yeah. we get to actually meet face-to-face uh, -face with people yeah. and have them invest in us. We just met a couple yeah. um, that's been awesome for us, our pastor mm -hmm. at our church, um, you know, so, yeah. like, you know, and life groups, things yeah. like that, community groups, whatever it is, just mm -hmm. finding community to come around you guys. Because one thing, that I know is that if you do relationships on an island, um, it's going to be very hard for you. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be very hard if you're doing relationships mm -hmm. on the island. And God didn't create us to do life alone or yeah. to just do life alone with just our partners, but mm -hmm. He created us to do it in community. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, I definitely agree. I definitely think that um, having community so much more involved um, has helped us thrive more because we can be more vulnerable about our weaknesses with, you know, our mentors or the person that's mentoring me or, you know, the pastor that pours into our lives. Like, we can go before him with, you know, knowing that he won't judge us and understanding that he loves us and cares for us and tell him our business without feeling judged. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that was huge for us. Yeah. Really yeah, huge. Yeah. Yeah, you need people in your dirt. You need people you in your need, dirt. You need people in your dirt. The right people. The right people. The right in your people, dirt. yes. The right people get, in no, your dirt. No pigs in your dirt. They no. just love rolling in it and <laughs> no. bathing in your mud. No. no. That's not what we're talking about. So, yeah, that's pretty much all we have for long distance and short distance relationships. That's pr pretty much what we've learned in the time that we've been together. Um, we'll be probably like around two years by the time we get married. Yeah. Will we? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No. Right no. around two years. Yeah, right around two years. A week after our second anniversary. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. Yeah. Wow. Oh gosh. Okay. So yeah, that's exciting. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys aren't already, make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Subscribe. Like this video. Like. <laughs> and follow us on Instagram. We love, love, love to see your comments. We love to see, you know, um, just everything that you guys comment on our videos or tweet us or whatever it is. Um, we truly do love seeing your feedback. We're just seeing your encouragement or support anyway. Um, but yeah, so stay tuned for the next couple of vlogs guys I'll be going wedding dress shopping and hopefully I find the one you know hopefully I do and then we're having our I guess cultural wedding tradition we're, yeah we're doing this uh, a dowry. it's called a dowry and we're doing it this weekend so I hope to take you guys on that journey so make sure you subscribe so that you can keep up with my videos and learn more about what the dowry is uh, I heard through the grapevines that once we have the dowry, we're low key married. Yeah, low key. So, so, yeah. so, be my wifey. so, culture. Right? Enable culture. <laughs> You're annoying. Anyways, um, we will see you guys in our next video and keep you guys updated on the wedding planning. And yeah, make sure you stay tuned to vlogs because that's where I'll drop most of the information about what's going on. But thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.